that uh, we're done with sermons. We don't have any more sermons today, just a few of them and that's it. Um, no, just quick uh, sharing as I would, was meditating in, in the readings today that one person was able to see God clearly uh, and that was John the Baptist. And he said that this is the Lamb of God. And if you notice the reading, he, he kept saying, I did not know him but he was revealed to me. And he basically got to see what prophets and many people wanted to see and understand and they never saw, which is the Lord Jesus himself. And which, which is the goal? As Abuna, Abuna said that this is theophany or epiphany, which is the revelation of God. And I want to tell you just one thing. If God is revealed to us, heaven is revealed to us, if God is revealed to us, heaven is revealed to us. And then no one will desire earth after that. No one will desire anything earthly, anything that's not as good as heaven. We know about God. But to know him and see him and experience him like John, this is something great. But there is something about John the Baptist that made him see God and see him clearly and actually that made him different than all the prophets and even different than all the scribes and Pharisees one difference but this difference made him see Christ a lot of people they're all worshiping God he was worshiping God scribes and Pharisees worshiping God they're all worshiping God we're all worshiping God here right but one person sees God and the other one does not. Why John was able to see the Lord Jesus Christ? Why he was revealed to him very clearly? This is the Lamb of God. Why John was so fast in discovering that? His ministry was, o was only six months. Discover that, baptize people, baptize Christ, and that's it. He figured it out very, very, very quickly. And sometimes we spend years and years and years to discover what John discovered, that God is revealed to him. And that one thing, as Abuna was saying, and repeated this verse uh, a couple of times, that I must decrease, and he must increase. One thing is that John emptied himself, was completely empty, that, that can see God. He was so low, that God is clear and God is lifted up and, 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 and everyone can see God. Basically, he put himself in the back seat. So Jesus is in the front seat. He put him second. So Jesus would come first and he would see him. What I'm telling you is something really, really, really simple. But something really, really, really deep and you need to figure it out. The more you put your desires your goals, yourself, your plans. Number two, I'm not going to say last, I'm not going to say number ten, but just second, he will be clear. Let me give you an example. When you wake up in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, not you, I have two million things to do. That's my will. That's my plan. That's my time. And I can plan it whatever, the way I want. But if I put myself number two, not number 10, just number 2, and God first, then I open my Bible, and I open my quiet time, and I tell him, before I say any word, and before I step a foot outside, I will let you speak. I will let you reveal yourself to me. And I read with an open mind, and tell him, God, reveal yourself to me. And then I discover something new, and amazing, and, and not a discovery, and not knowledge, but almost I can see him and touch him. He makes himself clear and available. And as I say, seeing God is seeing heaven. Have you seen anyone experienced heaven and saw heaven and decided to go back to earth? No. We wouldn't have had all these dead, dead people. They would have come back, but they decided not to come back because it's much better over there. That's seeing God. That's seeing heaven. That's experiencing something new. 
And that because one thing, he put himself just number two. In every decision I take, Lord, is this what you want to do? Or this is what I want to do? Let me ask you first what you want to do. And this is the simple phrase, what would Jesus do? What would you do, Lord, if you're in this position? What do you want me to do? What, how can I please you? And then, that's how God reveals himself. That's how we can discover him. And that's the theophany, or theophania, that's seeing God. Believe me, this is actually the goal of our spiritual life, our Christian life, is to experience him. Why, are, why do we want to go to heaven? What's, what's good there? Milk and honey? We don't believe in that. That's, that's past. That's the Old Testament. We're not waiting for milk and honey over there. We have a lot of milk and honey here in Giants and everywhere. We, like, like we're not lacking that. We're not in a desert. So what, what are we seeing in heaven? Why we say, oh, he's much, in a much better place in heaven. What's, what's over there in heaven? What's so amazing? The only thing that there is just one thing is God. And, he's, he's really, and we will see him face to face. Can we experience that here on earth? Can we? Yes, we can. Through his word. Through making him appear. And just putting ourselves just number two. Not number ten, just number two. Tell him, you speak. You say it first. You tell me what you want to do. I want to hear from you first. You know, this is exactly the opposite of how we pray. You know how we pray? You know, when, when we meet with God, we meet with Him, just step aside. Okay, let me say what I have to say. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven. He doesn't have a chance to say a word. You know, He's silent. Versus coming to prayer and being silent and being in God's presence first. And tell him, I, I will not speak. You start. I'm going to be silent until you speak. Any situation, any, in, in, in any circumstances, how can I see you in what's happening? For example, you, you, you face a, a problem. You face a flat tire. Okay? First thing you do is how angry I am and how bad luck I have. Not hearing from him first. God, what do you want to teach me? from this. I'm sure you want to tell me something. Say it. Go ahead. And he will speak. But just give him a chance. Give him a chance to be first. John the Baptist wasn't different than the scribes and Pharisees in anything except one thing. He said it doesn't matter what I want. It matter what he wants. He wants me to be in the desert. I will be in the desert. He wants me to eat honey and uh, 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 wild honey and, and locusts. I will eat locusts. I don't know if God, thank God he's not asking us to eat locusts, you know. But anything you want me to do. You want me to live in a desert? I will, live in a, I will live in a desert. You want me to be last, not to have any name, not to have any, any degree in life, any recognition? That's fine. He must increase, but I must decrease. Just on a smaller level that God will be clear and apparent in our life. That he becomes reality. That I can say, I experience God. He's doing great things in my life. He's talking to me. He's speaking. God is alive. My living God. Okay? That's the, the, that's the goal in the end. As, as we said, the, the, the washing, and this washing lead us, you know, to, to see God if we want and if we let him uh, be clear in our lives. And glory be to God forever and ever.